Um, uh, my favorites of his? Yeah, favorite and least. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a he's a hardworking, very responsible, very loving husband and dad. Um, he's just come to that point in the, of of his life where he's um you know really searching for his identity and who he is now, and um and and what he is, what he represents. Uh, um, and the thing that I like about him is he goes out and does something about it, you know. Um, he, he, he starts reading up on Zen and then he actually goes to a Buddhist monk and instead of just like, you know, yapping off to a priest, he actually goes and does something about it. So there's one thing about Neil, that he definitely takes action on things, even though most of the time that ends up falling flat on his face or whatever, but he, um, he doesn't just talk about it, he actually does something about it. Question? Your character makes a lot of unconventional choices. So <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what unconventional choices have you made that worked out for you? <laughs> I became an actor. <laughs> I had a great job driving trucks. Um, unconventional choices, uh, I guess, you know, um, I grew up in a very working class neighborhood. The idea of being an actor was saying, like, you wanted to be an astronaut. So. Um, after the army and working in factories and everything, to actually make the choice to say, like, I am going to be an actor, for me was very unconventional. I'm very much a black sheep when it comes to that sort of thing. My family. Next question. Neil has a really um, memorable conference room outburst in the pilot, which kind of reminded me of, like, Jerry Maguire or Office Space, you know. Is yeah. it, for you, is it, was it really cathartic to kind of say those things that we all wish we could say? but we never allow ourselves to have that freedom. Yeah, and it is always fun, but you always remember all those ones that have happened before. You remember them, you, you, you know, you've got American Beauty and Office Space, and you've got all those ones there. Um, but yeah, it's, there's nothing better than saying, than, you know, calling your boss a complete wanker. <laughs> and then, um, I, th I think it's, it's, he goes from the absolute elation the fun of it was going through the elation and empowerment of it, and then the completely depressing, the um, uh, you know the, the the depression of it not landing on anyone. That it really was just water off a duck's back, and the world continues. And I think that that leads up to this point in Neil where he has to take he's realizing he's ha he has to take a a huge action to smash this prison. He thought that would be the one. He thought well, that would be the one to just blow it all up. And he's realizing, wow, you gotta go further than that. How is he handling his, after the pilot, how is he handling his double life? It's, it's handled really well actually because the, uh, after the pilot is very reactionary um, and you really see both characters falling into um, paths and decisions and and they are still making choices, but um, they're kind of being, being pulled along by almost an unseen force. Um, so when we go into the series, we definitely come into Neil and Grace's MO, the way their marriage normally is. I mean, this is not a couple that's um, in counseling thinking about divorce. They're, they're kind of, you know, they're, they're, um, they're, they're cohabiting. They're, they're best friends, you know. They're kind of like best friends who rarely have sex um, and then we start dealing with the fallout and the aftermath of those things that have happened and lies upon lies and secrets upon secrets and and also um, you know both of these characters along this whole journey will be wanting to find out more about themselves and connect more with themselves and in doing so um, and through those unconventional choices there are some surprisingly, you know, positive things that come out of that that end up helping them to connect. And it's always, you know, it's always those, oh, just ships passing in the night. But, but these aren't two people. It's it's not the Bickersons, you know. They're not squabbling and hating each other and all that sort of stuff. It's like life's just life just is just cruising along. They're just cohabiting. So we get to see everything how this snowballs. Starts, and it starts snowballing quite quickly. 
Um, so both of the, your, you and your wife, there's a lot of, obviously, a lot of secrecy that's going on um, within their lives. Do you think that secrecy um, benefits their characters and their journey in the long run in any way? Or do you think it harms them? Well, that's one of the huge questions of the show is, I mean, it's a very telling thing that, that Neil didn't confront his wife straight away. He'd walk in there and go, what the hell? Um, and he actually went on a journey to even find out why his wife would have to do that himself. So part of these secrets and lies is that they, um, it shows that they're both asking the same kind of questions. They're both looking deep within themselves. They're just doing it so separately that when they do have the moments where they do connect back together and, um, uh, well, they're, they're the ones that obviously as an audience, we, you know, that makes you sit forward in your seat and you really start rooting for those moments when they connect. Um, because we're not watching a marriage dissolve. We're watching a marriage evolve. I don't know. I don't know what you call it. They're on a road that they have no idea. We're on a road that we, I, I don't even know the next what's on the next script. Um, it's, it's an ever-evolving show. Tell me one question here. Um, after having done this show, what would be your number one piece of relationship advice? <laughs> <laughs> what has the show taught me? <laughs> um, <laughs> don't respond to crisis by becoming a male escort. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, I've taken that one to heart. Um, I guess... Open, <laughs> openness and honesty and communication. You know, not to sound like I'm on the view, but <laughs> everything you know. you're not doing. On everything the show, I'm actually. not doing on the show. <laughs> yes. Um, it seems like the the pool and the yard kind of becomes this um, symbol of of release for your character. Is that something? At least in the pilot, is that yeah. something that we'll see? Is this kind of a place that you go to kind of? Not, not so much. I think that that was very much part of, of watching, um, you know, water is that essence of life and, and, you know, has been used so many times and especially in this one of, of rebirth. And so once at the end of the pilot, we see that Neil has changed in some way, that there is going to now be a movement forward as opposed to him feeling like he was on the, on the mouse wheel or the treadmill or just or running in place, or the grace was just, you know, cycling in place, I think. Um, uh, coming, coming out of the water, which was a very cold day, by the way. <laughs> so, um, I call that my shrinkage scene. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, that, that becomes like a rebirth and a kicking off of the series. And we're going to see two people that not only will think about, will really start thinking about change in their lives, but will really start uh, acting Can you talk a little bit about your experience working on cable TV? I know you've done cable work before. Um, does it offer any benefits in terms of creative freedom as an actor that you wouldn't get in other projects? Um, I guess as a, as, as, a, as a show, it takes the pressure off. Um, I guess a free-to-air network needs to rate through the roof, you know, in its first couple of weeks before, you know, it might get pulled. So something like this, um, a show like this, you kind of know will, you know, get its run through. Normally, these cable shows being 10 to 13 episodes, they open up the rest of the year for other stuff, and, uh, and it's, a, it's just a nice amount of time. I think on, on cable, you can tell stories that, um, you know, that mm. you get to survive a bit longer before uh, someone pulls the pin and says, you know, you're not making as much money. I'd seen Hung, okay. and when I first went in and spoke to the producers, I said, is this another Hung? Um, because if it is, I'm not interested. But, but no, as, as soon as I read the script, I knew that, um, you know, the whole male escort aspect of it is, is it's, it's fun to talk about because yeah. it's the hook. It's, you know, it's, it's the sort of thing that's out of the ordinary, but it's really just the symptom, it's symptomatic of what's, it's taken something, an idea to the extreme of what's happening within this relationship and, um, and within these individuals as they try and find themselves. It's almost expressionistic. It's kind of eyes wide shut mm -hmm. in that way. Next question. Um, I apologize. 
because I haven't seen the, the first episode yet. I just got it. But you don't speak with the, you're American in the actual show, right? Yes. So how do you, like, how do you do that? It just seems, like, difficult. I have a switch <laughs> right <laughs> here. Just <laughs> I wish. Do you, like, watch, uh, watch shows or something to, like... No, I mean it's it's something it's something that uh, as an actor you, you work on, and I never take it for granted. I've always found it. Um, it's it's a it's it's almost like putting on part of the costume as well, which is great. Great for girlfriends because you can leave it at work. <laughs> um, but um, no, I mean, like the la last role, he was more of a Chicago guy, so you you know. For this role, I wanted to actually, you know, plane out to make it a much more of a standard accent. So, we're really in this show saying that this is not any one city. Um, this is, is this isn't a story about Los Angeles or New York. It's it's just really, you know, Americana city, urban living. He got to do obviously you have to do some crazy things in the pilot. What's been the craziest thing you've had to do as Neil so far and what you filmed? Um, crazy as Neil. Yeah, I've fallen over quite a few times. I've gone in the water a lot. Um, I, th I think he finds himself in situations a lot that he, um, that he doesn't expect. Uh, you know, from corporate piracy that we're doing right now to, um, to you know, turning up to a, to a bachelorette divorce party. Or something, something like that. So, um, yeah, it's 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 definitely things. Anything that can more or less confront these two characters, kind of happens in this show. Yeah, he's already a corporate guy. Does this does doing the other the male escort stuff? How does that inform him for his regular nine to five job? Yeah, the whole thing is, you know, that's it's one thing he says in there. He's like, I'm not, I'm not an escort. I'm just a regular guy who, right. who kind of went wild for. A couple of nights, and he certainly on from the pilot. This isn't a show that is about oh well, what girls are you going to have this week? Yeah. It's not that sort of procedural. This is really watching um, uh, these two people really find different ways of finding their identity. You know, he's he's often bouncing things off his a uh, a, a Buddhist monk that he's found who uh, I think lives for the d lives for the time that Neil actually comes in and talks every day. I just loved hearing about his stuff. Um, so, uh, as 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 for, as the pilot kicks off, as the show kicks off, Neil doesn't expect that this will be a continuing thing. It's just that as lies and it becomes a web, and you can you know some things come back to haunt you, and you get sucked into some things, and so um, the show ends up being forming a, a tighter and tighter tightrope of that any secret can blow things wide open, whether it be um, relationship-wise or, you know, escort-wise, uh, what his wife's doing. Um, there's, there's, a, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of little or big white lies happening in this show. How is his daughter handling this without knowing what's really going on? Uh, yeah, no, I don't think she knows what's going on, but I think, um, uh, <laughs> Uh, hey, the daughter expresses a lot through her music, and I think that Sean Jablonski has, has definitely done that. That musically, some of what she is writing is symptomatic of what she's feeling is happening in the family. And um, I mean, the the one thing you can always tell is that everyone wants the best. Everyone wants to be happy. It's one of the big big things about the show is you know like what 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 really makes you happy. And then, what extent will we go to, to to get that? You know, what if if you think this makes you happy? How far will you you go to um, to gain that happiness? And does that happiness does that bring satisfaction? You know, that's the whole conundrum of the of the show. Yeah. Um, in the pilot, we see Neil's um, corporate life intersecting with his recreational life at the gala. Will those two worlds um, intersect again? And you mentioned walking a tightrope. Will they eventually become the same path? Uh, that I don't know. Um, I, I literally know things episode from episode. And I know they're doing that on purpose because I think they want 
us actors to be as lost as our characters. <laughs> so, um, but yes, there's, there's, there are different, the, you know, it's like this couple have brought in these other people into their, into their world now, like Adriana and Simon and um, Charles and, and there are different characters now that are now a part of their world who can influence and push and pull and dictate and so yeah we see we see a bit of overlapping and it also brings in a sense of definitely a sense of tension or danger or it raises the stakes in a lot of ways if Neil comes in and finds a black envelope on his desk at work you know or or um, you know the wrong guy comes knocking on on um, uh, on Stephanie's door, so it raises raises the stakes for everything. They start, as I said, they start to really walk a tightrope. But what they don't know is they're on exactly the same line. Donna, did you have a question? Yes. Um, as an actor, ideally, what do you have in mind for the length of a project? Like, would you like to see this go ten years, or would you like to see, you know, all three seasons would be great? You know, um, where you are in your career right now. I don't know. No, I, I, I don't. I don't know. I only just got the next episode, so I just read that. So I, I don't know. I don't <laughs> even know how this is going to finish. Like, you sign up for a project. Are you like, oh, this will be a great next five? You know, you know, when you sign up for a project, you have no idea what it's going to be, because all you've really got is the pilot, and then, you know, you, you're like three or four episodes into it and you're like, <laughs> what kind of show am I on? <laughs> um, that happens a lot, um, just about every show I've done. So you, you kind of go along for the ride and then there's so many other things that dictate that. As an actor, um, uh, going from one role to the other that can be so different and, and, and the nature of those shows be so different is, is a joy. And um, you, know, you just always hope that you enjoy the stories you're telling and, and that sort of thing. Piggyback. Piggybacking off that, how do you feel as an actor when you when you play certain roles? How it affects you personally in like your day to day life? Have you have any have you had any random moments maybe at the grocery store where you're just like, whoa, I just don't like <laughs> let's let's just say partners usually catch the brunt of that. Um, <laughs> you know, sometimes they're talking to two people and they're like, all right, I don't want to talk to Neil at the moment. Can I talk to Matt? Um, uh, you know, it, it 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 influences you in a little bit in a in a way, especially when you're in another city. You're really here. I'm just, you know, here to do this job, and and um, you you definitely start seeing seeing things in different ways. It makes you think about a lot of things because I, I it's impossible for me to sit there and judge my character. So I have to find out his way and why he why he is doing what he's doing. Um, but you know, like I said. Uh, that you've, you've got to leave work at work at some stage, and um, the World Cup's been good for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next question. Um, so on TV, something that I find really exciting is that we're increasingly looking at the complex gray area of life rather than saying like good characters, bad guys. What do you find exciting about that or challenging about that um, working in television? I think it's extremely exciting, whether it be a show like Dexter, or you know, or Breaking Bad, or you know, or Mad Men, or you know, these. The, I think I think gray area is the world we live in. I think the black and white, we you know, maybe maybe television-wise, we've evolved from the Brady Bunch, and we realize that's not real. You know, you know, there is escapism television. You can absolutely, and there's a place for that and an audience for that. Um, but you know this show absolutely falls in that gray area, and it's entertaining, and it's sexy. Um, it'll, it's also uncomfortable, and very truthful and raw in in a lot of places and in a lot of ways. So, you know, my mates, my ma <laughs> you know, I'm, I, I've got a I got a, a good honest group of mates, and they'll be like, so let me tell me this, would, would, I be, would I be all right watching this with my girlfriend on a Thursday night, or is it going to get really uncomfortable? And I'll be like, it's a bug. <laughs> that makes it exciting. Yeah, yeah, is it, it going to be cool to watch, or is it going to get a bit uncomfortable? I'll be like, it's a bug. Yeah, that's good drama. Yeah, absolutely. Next question? 
where does Matt Patmore hang out in Atlanta, Georgia? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I always try and find a good, a good pub because um, I like to, you know, on a, on a Sunday afternoon find, find somewhere to have a nice meal and a nice, an icy cold beer and somewhere to um, learn lines. So I just found it this weekend, but I'm not going to tell you because <laughs> it's mine now. <laughs> Don't want to ruin it once you tell people. And then it just exactly, like exactly, like yeah. Episode. I find a quiet corner, and so if I go there, there, and then everyone's in my corner, I'm like, well, now we're going to find another place. Can I tell us the neighborhood? Is it Buckhead? Uh, it's, it's not, I'm, I'm more around sort of Atlantic Station, mid oh, okay. I'm, I'm so, I just made it, I just wanted to be central while I was here. Next question, we probably have time for two more. Yeah? Coming off the Glades, kind of what about this show made you want to sign up for it? Um, well, the Glades, the Glades had a, it was, it was really good at what it did, being a, a very light cop procedural, had a very bubbly energy and, and, and just sort of really bopped along. Um, but the, the, the twists and turns were very much, um, you know, uh, to do with cases and it was a lot to do with the dialogue, almost, you know, those things read like plays, whereas, um, this is a show where so much is happening in between the lines, and there's nothing procedural about this show. Uh, there is no one episode that feels like the last. It, it really is watching this postmodern love story evolve, devolve. You know, you're really just watching, and week by week, um, there's 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 not that's that's why I keep thinking like, you know, what what did the Breaking Bad guys do when they were first asked by journalists, you know, what's your show like? You know, or, or what is your show? You know, it's it's one of those sorts of questions. You go like, to be honest, you'll just have to watch it. Um, it's a hard one to sum up, and for that reason, I really enjoyed it. I also really liked that it was it was a, a very modern day story, set in our postmodern time. You know, dealing with the American dream and and thoughts of identity and happiness and and things that we deal with in everyday life and relationships and. And then the extreme stuff, the male escort stuff, or other things that you'll find happen, um, that's, they're the fun bits, you know, they're the fun juicy bits. But the core of the show, you know, I, I was really drawn to how, um, how raw and honest it was, for better or worse, so to speak.